Welcome to the ACC on ESPN. Spectacular night for you in Blacksburg. 75 degrees and sunny for an ACC showdown with the team that won the regular season a year ago, Virginia Tech, the team that is in command right now. Florida State, get your game face, get your game hair on. It's a doozy. The lead off. This is just a fun team to watch. Again, those six hitters over 300. Look for them to do damage offensively. And uh, terrific speed at the top as well. They lead the country in walks. They're amongst the best in swiping bases. They will face Emma Lemley, the ace of the Virginia Tech staff, who leads the ACC Smitty in strikeouts. Yeah, Emma Lemley is a power pitcher, and she can just bring it. Her rise ball is explosive at the top of the zone. She's been working hard on her pitches and being able to expand the zone low with the curveball working a little bit down. But when Emma Lemley is on and she's at 68 to 70 miles an hour, she is fun to watch, throws with that great velocity, hits the corner. She does, though, Beth have to keep the ball in the park. She has given up 28 home runs on the year. So those 229 strikeouts and just 29 walks, outstanding, but slightly elevated ERA this year because the long ball has hurt her. Bit of a breeze that right now is blowing in from left field as Devin Flaherty gets set to start things off. The lefty senior from Sarasota, twice a member of the all ACC team. Last time we saw her on national television, she injured her shoulder, had to leave the last game of the Clemson series, uh, but didn't miss anything after that. So they were able to take care of it and get her right back in the lineup and uh, still trying to figure out, I think, some things in the batting order. Mudge has been at the top, Flaherty's been at the top. Now Mudge will settle in behind Devin tonight. Uh, with less than a month to go now in the regular season. And time is, uh, Getting short for Virginia Tech if they want to defend that ACC regular season championship. It would start nicely for them if they could pick up two or three against the Knowles. Well, I'm picking up the victory against the Knowles is really going to start with Emma Lundley. And again, that velocity in the high 60s to low 70s. She has a good drop ball that she's worked on as well as a curve ball. But it's that low rise that's been so effective. She does have a very good changeup. She's going to have to keep the ball on the corners. And when she does that, she's one of the best in the business. These two teams a year ago, Tech the two seed in the, or the three seed in the NCAA tournament, Florida State the two seed. But both got bounced prior to reaching the World Series. They come back hungry. Some big shoes to fill for Tech. Almost everybody back for the Seminoles. As Flaherty is retired on the ground out to the shortstop. Rachel Castine, one down. Rachel gets the start at short today. Ninth time for her at short. She's also spent some time catching as Kaylee Mudge steps in. First pitch swinging out towards the track and bounces off the base of the wall in right center. And one of the best teams in the country at hitting two baggers gets one early from Mudge and immediately a runner in scoring position. Yeah, and off the bat, you think this might be leaving the yard. It's a rise ball, it's elevated, but it's right down Broadway and Mudge just gets all into it. And this ball is going into the wind. If there had been any help with that, it might have left the yard, but you're right. This is a great team that hits gap to gap. So many doubles. 76 now on the year. Yep, and that's the 10th for Mudge. RBI opportunity for Kaylee Harding. Murfreesboro, Tennessee. She has a hit in her, each of her last four games after she fought her way out of an 0 for 17 drought prior to that. Key Cog, a big bat in their lineup if they want to make a deep run this year. And Lemley induces the pop up and it's dropped by Castine. So they made the switch at shortstop and catcher today, Smitty, and takes a bite out of him early. Just a ninth start at shortstop for Castine. Had been behind the dish. 
And that is, sometimes that's tough, especially we talked earlier, the wind is swirling a little bit. But absolutely a ball you need to catch if you're gonna beat the Seminoles. We're told Tegan Thrunk is available. She's been one of their mainstays there for much of the season. They'll test her again, could get two here, and they'll get the runner at second, and that's it, as Leonard is able to leg it out. The runners on the corners with two down. Well, good job by Castine. You know how it is, the ball always finds you to make that little bit of a mistake. Good job by Cameron Fagan to try to turn that double, but Castine, if she does a better little bit of a dart throw instead of a toss where it just kind of hangs in the air, there's a good chance they turn that double on Mac Leonard. Bring up Janai Kerr, eight home runs, 25 runs batted in on the season. Looking for a two out base hit. Seminoles have a plan, Smitty there swinging early and counts to start this one out tonight. Well, Emma Lemley throws with a lot of velocity and she's gonna be in the zone sweet early. That's the one you wanna attack before she can really play with you with that rise ball. Two, as Lemley gets the outside corner. Kelly Aldridge, making sure the infield is buttoned up here, or a chance maybe that uh, Leonard could be on the move from first, in a first and third situation. There she goes, the swing through and the strikeout. State threatens and Lemley works out of the jam. 230 strikeouts on the year for Lemley because she has this outstanding rise ball, works around a double. Hokies picking up the bat. Uh, that little lady's got it right. It is game day indeed here in Blacksburg. Game one of the three game series, Virginia Tech and Florida State. Tech works out of the early jam and they'll get to pick up the bats for the first time. 84 home runs, that is the most in Division I. And they've got four players in the lineup tonight that can all go deep and have done so double digits this year. Kelsey Brown getting set to lead things off against Katherine Sandercock, the senior from McLean, Virginia, back in her home state without a loss in league play so far this year. She's 8-0. Yeah, and she's the perfect type of pitcher to go up against a heavy hitting home run team. Harding couldn't pick it clean at third and the lead off aboard. Kelsey Brown, one of the best at getting on base, a 474 batting average and she's just so quick. And it looks like that just goes off of Harding's glove, maybe thinking about the speed of Kelsey Brown. They're going to call that an error, so an E5 to start it off. This is a Florida State team. That's their 40th error on the year. So both sides with a miscue in the first inning. Virginia Tech worked around theirs. Can the Seminoles do the same? Cameron Fagan out of Donnellan, Florida. Nine home runs, 31 runs batted in. Yeah, you mentioned how Sandercock is a good matchup for this lineup. The entire staff, the Seminoles, by the way, have used seven different pitchers this year. Collectively, have only given up a dozen home runs. Yeah. So you've got the best home run hitting team in the country against one of the stingiest staffs in the league. Yeah, it's going to be a fun matchup. Sandercock has given up just five home runs herself. She rolls a lot of ground balls. That gets away from Edenfield, and the base runner will advance to second. Brown in scoring position. A little bit of a shaky start for Florida State. It's got to be a pass ball. That goes off the glove of Edenfield. Well, they're going to call that a wild pitch, but uh, yeah, that's a rise ball, and it's a bunt situation. You could see the way Fagan came out looking bunt and pulls back. Sometimes the bat gets in the eye of the catcher, but that's still a ball that needs to be caught. One pitch to Cameron, pops up the bunt, Edenfield's got it. One down. That is a big out for Sandercock and Florida State to be able to get Fagan, who is 
a great hitter, also has some power, but they choose to bunt her. And she's just going to get underneath that rise ball, pop it up. Michaela Edenfield, good job of knowing it's a bunt situation, immediately sees the ball up, gets out, makes the catch. Addie Green in the three spot in the lineup. You may be thinking if you're Pete DeMore and the uh, Virginia Tech staff in Florida State's 15 games this year, only twice in ACC play have they given up more than one earned run in a game. So this may be a difference maker already in the first inning out at second base. When you're given opportunities, when Florida State makes an air wild pitch, you've got to capitalize. Sandercock immediately going to that rise ball. You know, she usually works down in the zone with a good drop ball, but has had to use that rise ball in a bunt situation. And with that open stance, here comes the 1 1. Stays away from that upstairs. Yeah, it's interesting. Beth, she's really open, as you mentioned, but as the pitch approaches, she steps in, and that's why Sandercock is still working underneath the hands. So you can see that open stance is where that right leg is almost out of the box, but she will step toward the plate. Florida State's been working her underneath. Cat is the redshirt senior who is approaching the 100 win mark in her career at Florida State. She's got 94 wins and uh, has a chance here down the stretch to join just three other Seminoles at the centennial mark in victories. She's been a mainstay for quite a while now. Pretty impressive and just slightly over 100 innings coming into this game. Slow roller to first. That'll be this. No, they're going to say she fouled it off her foot. So again, attacking on the inner half low. That ball just goes off the front foot. With Addie Green, that never feels good. Two pitch, four count. Green with a lot of power. She likes to stay inside the ball. And I know she starts with that open stance and steps close. She's still trying to work in her half out, so trying to put that ball center left. So being challenged underneath the hands. Here's a look at Pete. Now in his fifth season, back-to-back -back trips to the Super Regionals. They were a host last year. And in each of the last two seasons, just one win away from the World Series. Had a chance two years ago at UCLA, the Bruins Rallied, had a chance last year against Florida and lost two straight. Foul down the first baseline. So they are right there knocking it at the door. But of course they lost their ace, Keely Rochard, to graduation. And you know, part of this season has been learning to believe in each other, learning that they belong with the best in the business. They've won. The ACC regular season, two out of the last four years. So this is a huge weekend for them against the first place Knowles. Yeah, and I think something about Florida State, you know, the ACC, they went into Clemson. They got the target go. right yes. on their back everywhere they go. Absolutely. And you know, if you can, it kind of justifies your season if you can knock off uh, Florida State. 
And of course, for Lani Alameda and the Knowles, uh, you know, not so fast, wagging that finger. <laughs> The schedule maker in the ACC, by the way, this year, they are at Virginia Tech, at Clemson, and at Duke, the other top three teams. They <laughs> faced all of them on the road. And she also took her club to Oklahoma State yes. and Oklahoma. <laughs> Pressure cooker. She's like, bring it on. 20 teams, uh, 20 games against ranked teams, 19 of them away from home. And they've been doing just fine, thank you very much. They will be tested come postseason time. Great battle between Sandra Cock and Green. We've got Carter at the boost with it, our stat guy. Double digit pitches in this at bat for Addy. Lays off a ball forward. Two on with one out. And it's the number four hitter, Emma Ritter. I think Sandra Cock was hoping that this off-speed pitch was approached or taken. You can see she does a good job, that split grip. Able to have a hard top hand and a strong top hand, keeps that bat head back, picks up the ball. Just her 12th walk in 106 innings of work for Cat this year. And now you gotta deal with Ritter, one of those four players with double digit home runs. Well, and that's what makes Cat Sandercock <laughs> so hard to hit. So she goes a, a 12 pitch at bat, throws a changeup for the walk, comes right back with the changeup for a strike against Ritter. says she is an absolute sponge for information, watches a ton of tape, seeks out knowledge anywhere she can find it. Flaherty makes the play over to first, so that's good enough to move the runners over. Two out, two in scoring position. Well, and I like that decision by Flaherty. Flaherty is one of the best defenders in the game, and you can see the way she looks at Muffley, thinking, do I try to turn a double play here? It makes a good decision. Ritter can actually run pretty good. So it's Jamie Bailey's turn. She, if she can pick up Tech. They've missed on their first two chances with a runner in scoring position, and Sandercock knocks it down and fires to first. Both sides threaten, both pitchers work out of it. Scoreless in the first tonight in Blacksburg has had some issues with the long ball, some certain things she's still continuing to work through, but her velocity, still very good. Ed Field lifts this one out to left. Caught by Brown, one down. That rise ball still very explosive at the top of the zone, but it's those 28 home runs allowed, just 12 last year, so she's still trying to feel it, work it all out. Slightly elevated ERA, opposing batting average against slightly elevated. But if she can keep the ball in the park, she becomes one of the toughest pitchers to hit. That was Bethany Keene on the fly out. Here is Edfield stepping in. The other big uh, change is a mental one for Emma as the uh, sidekick last year to Keely Rochard. Lemley was phenomenal as that number two option, but you know what it's like, Smitty, to all of a sudden you're you're the woman now. You're you're number one. And uh, uh, some, some weight can come with that on your shoulders. Absolutely. You're, you've got to take the bull by the horns. You've got to embrace the challenges, the, the fact that your name's going to be called on the big games. And, and Emma does have that personality. She wants the ball for sure. But you know, it was hard to prepare for her because you also had to prepare for her other ace pitcher, yeah. who was, you know, one of the best, Keely Rochard, one of the best spinners, but they're very different. Rochard was, didn't thri quite throw with the velocity that Lemley does, so it's all on her right now. Now we go digging in a little bit. I did something bad by Taylor Swift before every game, Smitty. Is that enough to 
help her get through this seminal lineup tonight. See the fire in her eyes. Cat-like quickness gets to it. Two down. You got your swift tickets for the summer, Smitty? Uh, I, no, unfortunately. Oh. I, was, I, was, I, was, I was trying to get them. I think my sister might have them with this. Oh, there you go. All right. Helping out with your sister. Got mine in July, Smitty. <laughs> Follow along with the playlists, set lists everywhere she goes. Any extra, <laughs> extra one or two? You'll have to just uh, check them out. Hallie Whitecaser, the sophomore. Okay, that's fat. That's, yeah. We're all amongst friends here, the softball community. <laughs> yeah, I think that's one of our lines. It's <laughs> <laughs> about the one. No. That's, that's the one song. <laughs> <laughs> Breakout season for Hallie with the 330 batting average. Has uh, become the mainstay out in right field this season. And plants that one out in center. Two out base runner for Florida State. Well, Wade Kaser gets herself in a really good position. And at 2 0, oh, that's where this Florida State team is so good. They hit so well situationally. 46 games last year. She hit under 200. She was recovering from an ACL injury the year prior. Here's the nine hitter, Josie Muffley. Josie, too, has overcome a myriad of injuries over the course of her career. Now in her fourth season in Tallahassee after a freshman campaign at Tulsa. You can tell Florida State already making adjustments early in this game, laying off that rise ball in the first inning. They were biting at it, fouling it off. Kerr swung at a pitch above her head to strike out to end the inning, but a lot more discipline here in the second. Two zero pitch, and that will drop in for a base hit. Waycase are moving all the way. And it's bobbled and running through the stop sign and sliding in safe at home as Waycaser. And a costly miscue from Green out and right could not pick that up clean off the grass. And Florida State has the lead. And Florida State capitalizes on mistakes and how little they are doesn't matter. They will capitalize on a monthly on a 2-0 count. Again, aggressive in a hitter's count. Little bit of a bobble on outfield, but the key here is she misses the cut. She air mails it all the way home. It's offline.
not hitting your cut or you know, kind of airmailing it into home offline. Leads to a big run for the Knowles. And now the top of the order after Muffley took second base on the throw home. And she is now in scoring position for Devin Flaherty. Grounded to short her first time up. Takes off for third and dives in safe. Again, just reactionary. This team situationally looking at everything and advancing. They will take that 60 feet when the opportunity presents. So it's a change up. They see it in the dirt and immediately Muffley, there is no hesitation. She never turns her hips as if she's going to return back to second base. She immediately goes 60 feet closer to home plate. Eighth stolen base of the year for Josie. And third consecutive hitter that Emma Lemley has started out 2-0. The other two base hits. This is a rise ball a little bit high, so it goes to 3-0. and So good at passing on information to one another from batter to batter. Flaherty draws the walk. She's got blazing speed at first now, so an opportunity with a first and third situation to try and Wreck some havoc with Mudge coming up. Speed also at the plate. A big, big decision also for Virginia, Heck, Virginia Tech here to play this first and third situation. Flaherty tries to steal. What are they going to do? Do they throw down? Try to get Flaherty. Muffley's at third. It's going. Mudge fouls it off. I think you have to play this traditional. You've got Fagan at second base who does a really good job. She just needs to read Muffley. Castine maybe goes back to the bag for a throw through. And Fagan reads it. If she sees Muffley staying at third, she lets it go through. Muffley breaks home. She cuts and comes back home. Runner goes again, the pump fake, so two in scoring position. And for Devin Flaherty, that's number 25 on the season. 99 on the year for Florida State. So they run well, they hit for risk well. Close to 350 batting average risk, but which is higher than their 305 team batting average. Pretty impressive. Much now who doubled her first time up. Held off two and one. Michelle, almost 350. Well above the <laughs> average around the country. So they don't always use the long ball, 44 home runs on the year, but they don't need to because they do that. I mean, close to 350 with runners in scoring position is outstanding. Mudge lifts that one to the left. Brown is back, makes the catch. A couple left on base, but the first run of the night up on the board, and it belongs to Florida State. Now Florida State getting on the board early. Good job by Waycase for coming around, scoring. Knowles up one to nothing. The ACC Softball Championships. Florida State has won seven of the last eight, including last year over Clemson. All nine of the games will be available on ACC Network or on the Deuce. I always love the tournament. Opportunity for everybody to we have are, a shot. Yes, we are within a month now of Selection Sunday. 
So all those championship games, right? They're stacked up Saturday and Sunday. Uh, that second weekend in May, and then the selection show, followed up by the seven innings after party. We got two hours of coverage this year. That'll be Sunday night, May 14th. Peck waits on the off speed. Much has it went down. Six, seven, eight due up for Tech. Yeah, you got, of course, Florida State, fifth in the country, Te uh, Virginia Tech's 22nd in the country, both Clemson and Duke also in the rankings. Louisville having a terrific yeah. season. Florida State will host Louisville at the end of the year. Could be huge implications. That'll be their final regular season series. Two down, as Wade Kaser has it. Hey, this week we got uh, Sunday Night Baseball for you. Will he or won't he? After Max Scherzer's appeal of a 10-game suspension, might he be the fellow on the hump for the Mets against the San Francisco Giants out west? Sunday at 7 Eastern, Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN. Coverage begins at 6 o'clock with Countdown. Baseball season well underway. The other big news today is uh, the return of Fernando Tatis for the San Diego Padres back in the starting lineup after serving out his suspension that carried over from last year. He's Rachel Castine in the eighth spot. We've got a fabulous weekend coming up around the college softball world that starts with tonight's doubleheader. We are here in Blacksburg. We will get you to Austin, Texas later tonight for the Longhorns and Oklahoma State, a top 10 showdown. Yeah, that's gonna be a good one. We're gonna see Florida, Tennessee this weekend. You and I get a chance to go out to Easton Stadium for UCLA and Arizona State. Iron Bowl. Iron Bowl softball is this weekend. Lots of moving and shaking. There you go. There's our road to the Women's College World Series in the next 72 or so hours. <laughs> no good math. softball. No man. Just good softball. Castine gets a hold of one. Mudge back to the fence. Reaches up and makes the catch. Glove robbery out there for Mudge. Catherine Sandercock giving some love to Mudge, and this ball on a one-two count. This is a big miss by Sandercock, but guess what? Mudge is there. She's got her back. Oh, Tech, you got Mudged. To get some revenge against Baylor this weekend for their only loss of the season, which was actually a non-conference matchup yeah. back in February. They haven't lost since. And now their league games in Waco this weekend. Still to come in two weeks' time. Battle, battle up. That'll be in Stillwater this year, early May. Yes. Swing and a miss for Kaylee Harding. Three, four, and five coming up. An unearned run in the second inning for Florida State. And then Kaylee Mudge robbing a home run ball defensively for the Knowles to keep Virginia Tech off the board. Hardy reached on an error her first time up. Two errors already in the game for the Hokies. One of them costly on the run score. The thing about Florida State is they just figure out a way to make you pay. They take advantage of the errors, the free passes. Grounded a short. One down. How about the defense for Mudge? This ball off the bat looks like it's going out, but Kaylee Mudge is so good at going back and just times it perfectly in the dugout. Oh, yeah, they're celebrating. All you see is the glove just reaching over the wall. Danger, beware of home runs. Not when Mudge is out there, That's people. Right. That's right. 
That's the sign uh, out beyond the outfield fence because Campus Drive is uh, only a short distance behind the Mudge Wall. And you know, Beth, that's impressive when you do it at your home park, but when you do it at the visiting park that you haven't been at for a couple years, it makes it that much more impressive. Mac Leonard at the plate. Well, that's part of the pregame routine, right, for any outfielder first time in a ballpark because for a lot of these Seminoles, they've not played in this ballpark. It's been like five years, four years. Yep. Uh, to get familiar with the outfield, how, how wide is the track? How high is the wall? What, what does it play like with a ball hit off the wall? Well, the defense, a lot of times here, is, you know, plays deep, obviously, depending upon you know, who's up, but you know, Coach Lonnie Alameda called it a wind tunnel and that the yeah. ball travels, so Florida State playing deep. Ball leaves the yard, obviously. Virginia Tech, number one in the country. Almost had their 85th. They have thought about the rise, two and two. There's a handful of teams around the country. Florida State's one of them, right? When you talk to opposing coaches, one of the first things they say is, we cannot help them. They are good all on their own. We don't need to help them with miscues and mistakes. Leonard swats at that slow roller. The second nice scoop by Fagan. Two down. We are one week away, Michelle. Next Thursday night, it's the NFL Draft from Kansas City. And we've got you covered on ESPN, ESPN Deportes. Great stuff, uh, good storytelling on ABC. Also available on the NFL Network. Every pick on ESPN starting next Thursday. Three days of live coverage with a lot of quarterbacks. Quarterbacks are plenty at the... Uh, top of all the mock drafts. Pitchers. Similar, right? Similar egos, similar big egos. <laughs> Circles. Beth, <laughs> Beth Mullins and Michelle Smith, the Olympic gold medalist pitcher. Got to have a little attitude when you're in the you circle. Got to. You got to. Got to be a little crazy the first uh, get in there anyway. It's okay to be bold. It's okay to be <laughs> ambitious. It's okay to want the ball. And, and you know, put it all out there for everybody to watch. 0-2 pitch to Kerr. She'll pull that. Fagan just out of her reach. And it drifts out to right. And this is interesting because Cameron Fagan was moving more toward the middle based on where this pitch was supposed to be. It was outside. You could see her leaning up the middle and then Kerr gets around this ball, drives it into right field. And, you know, sometimes that's a big part of pitching is that you can't pitch against your defense. So when you're supposed to be working that outside corner, you got to make sure you hit it. Bethany Keen, base runners in each of the first three innings now for the Knowles, and that's drilled right at Castine inside, retired. One left on. Oh, yeah, the dogs are out tonight. Last year, with the two wins in the national semis coming out of that loser's bracket. Yeah, and then Oklahoma State had beat them four times every time they played last year. And then when it counted, boom, Texas was on a roll. It all started, chip on the shoulder. Remember, they thought they That's were gonna right. host, they got sent to Washington. Unseated, three unseated teams last year at the World Series and Texas, the first to ever reach the finals. Opposite way and foul. Madison Hansen is the pinch hitter here in the nine spot in the order to lead off this third inning. Kylie Aldridge, uh, the catcher, could re-enter and stay in the game defensively. But uh, Hansen, 207 with uh, some pop. Kelly Maxwell is the uh, strikeout leader in the Big 12. See if she gets the start tonight for Oklahoma State. Both those clubs have uh, three, four good arms that they'll be using. Mac Morgan's been really strong for Texas as of late. Boy, what a great weekend for softball in Texas with uh, Oklahoma in Waco and Oklahoma State in Austin. Depending 
depending on game times, you can almost like back and forth. You could. At 35. Can you drop? <laughs> Get the helicopter out, Smith. <laughs> Pops it up, back on the grass for Muffley. One down. Time for the order coming up. The lineup comes your way this weekend. Is this one of the best times of the year or what? Got NBA playoffs for you Friday night on ABC. Devils Rangers, uh, the cup playoffs Saturday night on ABC. And then Sunday, NBA playoffs in the afternoon and Major League Baseball from San Francisco on Sunday night. Terrific lineup for you all weekend long. Warriors in a bit of a bind against Sacramento with the uh, suspension of Draymond Green. They're down 0-2. First time in Steph's career that they have gone down 0-2 in a series. That's how good they've been for so long. Oh my gosh, is that an old Kevin Durant jersey? When he was drafted by uh, the Seattle Super Sonics, he became the Thunder. Kelsey Brown reached on an error her first time up, and the base hit out to left. Kelsey Brown with just such great back control. 0-1 pitch. Just the way she moves through the box, she's really quiet with her lower body, and then just great eye-hand coordination and can barrel this up. So look at the way she's going to cross over that left foot. She's down, her eyes are steady, and that's one of the keys when you're slapping is you have to make sure that your eyes are steady, it's not bouncing. She takes that pitch and just drives it the other way. Senior out of Haymarket, Virginia, has a hit now in 10 of her last 11 games with the third best batting average in the league. Almost ran into that rocket from Fagan. Back-to-back -back singles and a couple aboard for Tech here with one down. And they've got the tying run now in scoring position here in the bottom of the third. Well, second time through the lineup, they know what they're looking for. And this is a pitch that's right down the middle and Fagan just tattoos it. First pitch, she's aggressive, she goes and gets it. Exactly what Tech needed to do here. Try to make some noise here in this third inning. First two hits of the night off of Katherine Sandercock. And here comes Addie Green, who had a 12 pitch at bat her first time around and drew a walk in the first. Wow, that's a big time pitch, a 54 mile an hour changeup. And that's the pitch she actually walked on on the 3 2 count. Well, you're seeing a confident Catherine Sandercock. 8 and 0 oh in the ACC, just three earned runs allowed in 47 innings. Fought off a threat in the first, and here come the Hokies again in the third. A little bit different first couple pitches to Green. Change-ups, they had been throwing her all underneath the hands, really challenging her on that inside corner. One one pitch. Go to her power zone, but the key is is that she elevates the pitch. So she puts it just enough on the outer half and just up enough at the eyes that she gets green to swing at a pitch out of the zone. Well, you know, she's full of adrenaline tonight. Uh, perhaps her last road trip back to her home state in her seminal career. Skies that out to right center. Kinner, uh, Kerr calling for it, but Waycaser will make the catch. Two down. Communication by Kerr and Waycaser out there in the outfield. It's actually an easier play for Waycaser coming in from her angle, but center fielder typically always is the general. That is a big out nonetheless, second of the 
inning. Second chance now for Emma Ritter, the number four hitter with a runner in scoring position. She grounded out her first time up. There you see the pitch count for Kat. We're having a conversation right now with Lonnie Alameda. We'll be uh, chatting with Lonnie next half inning. And then Pete DeMore after that. I'm sure Coach Alameda is just reminding him of the situation. Two outs, two on. One of the top home run hitters in this club. So the second time tonight that Ritter can do some damage. Right back to Sandercock, and for the second time, Cat induces a ground out right back to her own glove to get out of the for the Seminoles over the Hokies. Lonnie Alameda now joins us. Uh, Lonnie, looking at your schedule, you knew you were facing all the toughies in the ACC yeah. on the road, yeah. and here you are again. What What is the message for your ball club when you know you're heading into a hostile environment? I mean, one, we just talk about how great it is. Like, you know, I mean, it, it's just so fun to play this. She's an amazing pitcher. This is a great group of hitters. Like. You know, iron sharpens iron, right, when you get yeah. against these kind of teams. And so um, much respect for Pete and everything he's done and, and the ACC in general. So, um, you know, it'd be nice to be at home for some of them. But, like, <laughs> that's just the way the schedule goes, and you have no control over that. But, you know, to have this opportunity in this beautiful night, it's amazing. Well, and, Coach, uh, Virginia Tech uh, leads the country with 84 home runs. How, how yeah. do you keep the ball in the yard against them? Not just yeah. Mudge, but the pitchers <laughs> as well. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I, you know, I mean, we got to, you know, we got to fight here in the box. Um, solo shots, um, don't let them get a big inning. I mean, I kept the cat's bearing down pretty good right now. Got to play defense. I mean, all those things, right? But um, you can tell that they they mean intent when they swing the bat, and uh, you know it's kind of fun. But you know, as a pitcher, you just got to take a deep breath, and it's just one pitch at a time, one pitch at a time. And I think Cat's doing a good job of that right now. Thank you very much, Lonnie. Yep. We appreciate it. Thank you. Well, she was talking to us off camera about how they work on uh, their defense during their practice today. And this was a look at Mudge. Oh, yeah, she got a little bit of vertical on that to <laughs> wrap the home run. Well, she, that's a hard position to jump and think about it. You put your hand up in the air and then you have to jump. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like you're using your arms to jump up. Michaela Edenfield skies that one to right. Eddie Green, one down. Seven, eight, and nine in the batting order here in the fourth. Well, everybody is uh, trying to chase down the Seminoles in the ACC. You know, what Lonnie has been able to do, they, they have an ACC title in eight of the last nine years, and that's seven times in the regular season, six times in the ACC tournament. Lonnie has won 83% of her games as a head coach at Florida State against the league, now in her 15th year. And uh, Virginia Tech of late's been making a little noise. So has Duke, so has Clemson. They yeah. have all won an ACC title in the last several years. The regular season, which Florida State has not. And I thought it was interesting when we were talking to, to Lonnie, she mentioned, you, she mentioned the regular season that she wanted it. You can tell she wanted it this year. She wanted the consistency that it takes in order to win that championship. National champs in 2018. They were back in the champ series a couple years ago. In the midst of a really good run. And then the stunning loss at home last year in the regionals that really shocked the softball world. And so they are coming back this year with Oklahoma City on their minds. They're enjoying the journey, but you know, once the mayhem begins, they are in position right now to host a regional and a super regional. If you like uh, the RPI, which the selection committee usually likes the RPI a lot, Seminoles are a top eight right now. In a good position to potentially host, as you mentioned, the regional, the super regional. It makes your job so much easier to get to Oklahoma City, although last year was the anomaly. Bit of an outline.
Duke is another ACC team that's also in the top eight right now. Clemson probably going to host a regional. They might still have some work to do for a super. It's down to that schedule, right? You've got to have a strong strength of schedule, not just for your seating, but so that when you show up in the postseason, you're, you're seasoned. Strikeout number two for Lemley, two down. Of course, in, in women's softball, we talk about that uh, regional bubble and the super regional bubble. You want to be a top eight seed to host both weekends. And there is your Supers bubble right now with the seven, eight, and nine RPIs. Big thing for me would be that there's a big advantage for Florida State and Tennessee over Northwestern right now in terms of total wins against top 25 opponents. There's nitty gritty things that the committee looks at. Make the difference. Josie Muffley singled her first time up. And then the error out in right field allowed Waycaser to motor all the way around from first to score. Reached for it. And a one, two, three inning for Lemley and Tech. A one-run game. Welcome back to the ACC on ESPN. A one-run game tonight in Blacksburg. Pete Demore now with us on the mic. Pete, when we talked to you earlier this year, you talked about buying more hit machines and hitting the ball hard. How much of a difference has that been in terms of the long ball game for you guys this year, leading the country in that department? I think it's been a big deal for us. You know, I like to challenge our kids in practice. And uh, at first, they don't like it too much because they fail. And um, <laughs> when you start hitting balls over the fence, they like it a little bit more. And Coach, what do you like that Emma Lumley's doing this evening? Yeah, she's uh, she's mixing her pitches and she's throwing some good drop balls. Um, she's not over the middle of the plate very much. So um, when she's hitting her corner, she's, she's tough. All right, well, thank you very much. You're we welcome. appreciate thank you. it. Yeah, thanks, guys. Wonderful hospitality here at Virginia Tech, the uh, opener of a three game series, uh, pivotal in the ACC race right now with Florida State on top. They are two games in front of Clemson in the loss column with tiebreakers over both second place Clemson and third place Duke right now. Virginia Tech is four games back in the loss column, so they can really make up a ton of ground with a, a good showing this weekend. There's a look at the top five right now. Louisville, outstanding year. They will be at Florida State to close out the regular season. Good chance that Duke could run the table. They have Georgia Tech and Pittsburgh, their final two series. And then everybody heads to South Bend for the tournament. Muffley gobbles that up at short, one down. Really good job by Muffley to keep her focus with Kaylee Harden coming across trying to grab that ground ball before it got to Muffley. Here's Bree Peck. Flew out to left in the second. She flew off on a change up to see if uh, Sandra Kopp continues to mix the speed. As you mentioned, 84 home runs for Virginia Tech, led by Bree Peck with 14. Pitch swinging, jumped up at Flaherty, but she's able to make the play, two down. I like what Pete DeMoore said just a moment ago, and a lot of coaches these days facing the, the same thing in a lot of different sports, kind of this new breed of athlete. You've got to learn that it's okay to fail in front of your teammates. It's okay to fail as you're trying to practice and prepare to get better uh, as a player and as a unit. 
Absolutely. One of the things that's happened with our sport is that you know, all these kids want to be recruited, so they go to all these tournaments that are you know, more about getting looks than it is about competing. So you go to exposure tournaments, and, and it's, on a t it's an hour, 15-minute drop-dead game time, so they never learn how to play a sixth or a seventh inning. <laughs> they never know Clutch. what it's like. Yeah. yeah, you don't know the all the clutchness and the, you know, all the things that you have to learn to compete. And what is expected to be a very competitive series this weekend. Pitchers have settled in nicely in a, a one, two, three inning for Sandercock as well as we move it. Back to the top of the order, third time up for Devin Flaherty, grounded out in the first, walked and stole a base in the second. Only run tonight unearned for the Seminoles in that second inning. And that's lifted out to left. Kelsey Brown is there, one down. Here's a good look as you're walking into beautiful Tech Softball Park. Last year they hosted a regional and a super regional right here. I think a lot of people really thought with Keely Rochard and Lemley had that opportunity to get there. And one game one, it's amazing how hard it is to win that second game to punch your ticket to Oklahoma City. And Florida said, not so fast. Yes, really put the pedal to the metal in games two and three, and they got their way back to the Women's College World Series. Where ultimately it turned into a Big 12 party with three of the four national semifinalists, Oklahoma, and then the two in our second game tonight in our doubleheader, Oklahoma State, Texas, coming up. A lot of competitive at the top of the conference as ACC, we talked about Clemson, Duke, you know, these two clubs, same thing with Big 12, Pac-12. Uh, but there's a lot of great mid-majors this year. Oh, fabulous parity around the country, I think, behind Oklahoma. Maybe UCLA is just a notch below that as Mudge laces one out to center. Tuesday night was absolutely nuts. Be careful about the midweek uh, non-conference business because it's getting a little testy out there. The mayhem has started early, Smitty. Here are the upsets just a couple of nights ago. Wichita State over Oklahoma State. McNeese beat LSU. Liberty took down Alabama. And Grand Canyon knocked off Arizona State. There's been a bunch of those throughout the course of the season. Yeah, it's been a, that type of year. I mean, there are some great mid-majors that have been in and out of the top 25 rankings. And I'll tell you what, they show up at your regional, you better be prepared yeah. for them. Well, Sydney McKinney is one of the top hitters in the NCAA yes. for Wichita State. She seems almost impossible to get out. <laughs> She's on the list the USA uh, softball Yep. Finalist list of 25 players came out today. She's on there. Oklahoma, five Sooners on that list. The SEC leads the way uh, with eight selections. And there are two here in the ACC, Kat Sandercock and Valerie Cagle. Yes, uh, Sydney McKinney joined us on the Seven Innings podcast That's this week. right. Yes. Take a listen to that, at Seven Innings. There's a rope down the line and left, and that will get under the glove of Kelsey Brown. Mudge headed for home, and she slides in safely. RBI for Harding to drive it in. And what appeared to be another chance in the outfield to keep the runners on base. 
This is a rise ball that just bleeds back inside, and Katie Harding just bashes it down the line. Kelsey Brown in left field is going to let that get past her, but then this ball by Rachel Castine, the shortstop again. This is just her ninth start of the year at that position. Air mails it, does not get it to Aldridge. And so easily coming around is Kaylee Mudge scoring from first base. RBI double for Harding, and then she's able to advance to third. They do not score that an error on Brown out and left. And as the ball got by her to the fence, and that allowed Mudge to come in to score. 2-0 Knowles, and here's Mac Leonard with a runner on third and just the one out. Yeah, so the ball got past her, but it's probably also a situation where a better cut could have gotten her. Leonard, the gapper. That'll be extra bases, and another run is in. Back-to-back -back doubles, and the third hit in a row for Florida State. Well, this is what Florida State does so well. They hit almost 350 with runners in scoring position, but they pass the back. A single, a double, and now another double. Pitch on the outer half that Mac Leonard just does so well. She goes the opposite way. She lets the ball travel. She bashes that into the gap, and Emma Riddick can do nothing but try to run that down. Mac Leonard with a big double puts that third run up on the board. <laughs> Some trouble here for Emma Lemley and Tech in the top of the fifth. And Mike Lewis will come out and talk with Lemley. And I, you know, Mike Lewis is calling the pitches from the dugout, and as coach, head coach Pete DeMore said, it's kind of more of a suggestion. I would like to see Emma Lemley throw that change up more often. She's not throwing it enough, in my opinion, and then working that effective velocity underneath the hand. She's had a couple of misses where the ball's been over the plate, but with her speed and that very good plus change up, she needs to use that more often. Hey, don't forget this week, uh, another edition of Sunday Night Baseball. And we head out to Oracle Park in San Francisco for the Giants and the Mets at 7 Eastern. Coverage begins with countdown at 6 from the Baseball Tonight crew. Four and a third now for Lemley. The seven hits, two earned runs in this inning. The unearned run in the second inning. Nobody in the bullpen right now. And a 3-0 no lead. Janai Kerr has Autumn Belvi, the pinch runner, out at second. And there it is. That's the changeup. And that's the pitch she needs to use more consistently now. They're probably going to talk a little bit about making sure that uh, you're not telegraphing it, the runner on second. But, you know, a lot of changes as well for Emma Lemley. Mac Lauder was the starting catcher last year who called the game. And so different pitch callers, different catchers. And of course, recent announcement that Doug Gillis, their assistant coach, is no longer with the team, uh, no longer with the school. So and he was the pitching coach. Yes. And that just does catch the netting. Nice grab, number 11. Who's that on the roster? <laughs> One-handed snag. There you go. <laughs> Thumbs up indeed. Mutu to Kerr. Janai out to right. Addie Green is there. Belvi will tag. Stumbles on her way to third, but is able to dive in safely. Two down. Bethany Keene, go for two, a fly out, a line out. Florida State trying to pick up one more. Makes really good adjustments. Third time through the lineup, just really figuring things out. 
Florida State team. They just, you know, it's not always just the, you know, the 300 batting average, 305 batting average. It's, it's just the way they put hits together. Consecutiveness, passing the bat, taking advantage of the little miscues, making you defensively have to do everything perfect. To throw them out at home, your relay coming in from left field has to be perfect. Three straight hits this inning, the single and then two doubles. Blocked on the dirt by Aldridge. We've got six players with some good power, seven regulars in the lineup or 300 hitters. They've got the speed on the bases. And the other thing, this game, they've been three for seven with two outs. Uh, just one for six risk, but three for nine with runners on. It's all those situational opportunities. And, and of their seven hits, three of them are for extras. Three doubles tonight. Of course, not only do they have the rest of this series, they also are at Notre Dame, and then they close out with Louisville at home, and they still have both ends of their Florida series right. that they play home and home. So two games with the Gators still remain. Yeah, the Gators have been playing well as they have. Keen, gloved by Bennett at third. Emma Lemley, solid so far. A couple of errors have hurt, and 0 for 5 with runners in scoring position. They have not been able to capitalize when they have the runners in place. Beth Mullins and Michelle Smith with you here at Tech Softball Park. Just a few weekends remain in the regular season. Then our coverage of all, all the major conference tournaments, of course, building towards May 14th and the NCAA softball selection show. Two hours of coverage for you this year on that Sunday night. And then all the pitches and all the home runs from the regionals and the super regionals. Road to the Women's College World Series, where Oklahoma will attempt a three-peat mm -hmm. after winning each of the last two. And UCLA has done that. Should be a little asterisk that Arizona could have won four or five. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did win four or five. Could have won five straight. It's going to be a tough ticket to get. How about the Texas Oklahoma? Well, they have nearly season. ten thousand yeah. people there, right? Yeah. For, yeah. Set a new attendance record for a regular season softball game. For Tech, here's Rachel Castine, robbed of a home run back in the second inning by Kaylee Mudge out in left field. Rounds it to Muffley. Oh, no. Hey, the NFL Draft is a week from tonight, April 27th. We've got every pick on ESPN with our usual expert analysis, also available on the NFL Network. And ABC's coverage will focus on the stories of the prospect's journey to the draft. All three days, of course, also on Deportes, radio, and the ESPN. I think it's the biggest and best draft yet from Kansas City. What a, what a fabulous move that was to start moving the draft around. Oh, yeah. NFL cities. And that one, that, that one in Las Vegas was pretty big. Crazy it was. <laughs> Kylie. 
Charlie Aldridge. This is her first at bat. In the third inning, she was uh, lifted for a pinch hitter and then re entered. I like her behind the dish. Huh? One of the reasons why, you know, if you can play your spot defensively spot on, affords you at times to be able to get in that lineup. Aldrich back just before the track goes Autumn Belvi, the new right fielder, two down. Did a good job of getting in on a on a pitch on the inner half and just barrels it up. Kelsey Brown, so it's the third time around now for batters against Catherine Sandercock. Brown has reached twice, once on an error, once on a base hit down the left field line. This time Sandercock comes in on her. Her, her single the last time up it was hit to right where Kaylee Mudge is standing right now down that left field line. Yeah, so you can see the middles are pulled well inside the baselines. The corners are going to be up, and even the outfielders, you can see Janai Kerr, center fielder, is pulled toward left field. Left field, Kaylee Mudge to the line. She's almost grabbed a fly ball over the outfield fence and the bullpen <laughs> fence tonight. <laughs> she is all over that part of the field. it down, Sandra Cock, good fielder at her position, and a one, two, three inning for the second inning in a row. Three nothing, Florida State to the sixth. Nothing lead, Florida State added to it in the fifth inning. Kaylee Mudge got things going with a base hit. Kaylee Harding, the RBI double, ending with the Mudge slide into home plate, and then on the heels of that Leonard with another run scoring double to bring Harding home. They were dancing in the dugout. A good time was had by all on the Florida State side and a 3 0 lead on seven hits tonight. Virginia Tech has only been shut out twice all season Tennessee and North Carolina. And so far, a bagel on two hits. And Emma Lemley back to work. Seven, eight, and nine coming up. On well, each of the innings that Florida State has scored, the, the defense has been a little shaky behind Lemley. Error in the first that she worked out of, error in the second, they ended up scoring. And really, that defensive play in left field, cut coming in, that really was not very sharp, probably could have had. Mudge at home, if it had been a much better relay. Then I wouldn't have been able to use the phrase mudge slot, which <laughs> has us frantically searching for a blender up here in the press box. But. <laughs> uh, like mudge. Shinfield grounded back to the pitcher, flew out to right. Mudge just always finds herself in the thick of things. Yeah. Defensive plays. Offensive Robbed plays. a home run tonight. Well, Florida State just does a good job of always, you know, pushing the limit. That's a good look at Kaylee Mudge. Is that, you know, they, they make you perform at a high level to beat them. Number two, she, she was not 
in the lineup much in that first season and just sort of burst onto the scene, was patient, waited for her big moment, happened late in her freshman year, mm -hmm. and then exploded at the World Series. Set records for yeah. hits for a series and hits in a single game. And it's just been carried over the last couple of seasons. The count goes to three and two. Yeah, I think a lot of people, you know, we talk about that 2018 National Championship, but they were also playing for the National Championship shortly after that, beat Oklahoma in game one. Oklahoma had to come back and beat them in games two and three. Similar team offensively in that they were a menace on the base pass yes. that year. They were real aggressive, stole a lot of bases. I believe we called them the Seminole Saboteurs. Saboteurs. <laughs> you know me in alliteration. I'm going to sell it. <laughs> it's stuck for that year. <laughs> but they're close to 100. I think they're at 99 stolen yeah. bases now. They have one in this game. There was one that was ruled wild pitch. I thought it was a stolen base. You would have given it to her? I would have given it to her. And a called strike three. Third of the night for Emma. Second time she's gotten somebody looking. Oh, she's going to dial this one in underneath the hands of Edenfield. And this is just a great pitch on the corner, right at the knees. Really good look at the location on that. That's a pitch that you got to swing at. Third strike out of the night for Emma Lumley. Caser singled and scored in the second, and then struck out looking in the fourth. Well, we talked earlier, Beth, about you know the length of this Florida State lineup. I mean, they're just strong one through nine. It's not like you have three or four hitters that you can pitch around. They battle. They've got the speed. They have a good way of uh, you know stirring the defense. And one of the things I always look at are base on balls to strikeouts before the game even starts. 188 base on ball to just 146 strikeouts. And when you know and it's on the plus side of the the free passes, you know it's going to be tough to keep them off the bases. And then when they are on the bases, they steal bases. <laughs> <laughs> well, and they have the depth too to yes. bring a big bat into the ball game. Katie Dack is out in the on deck circle who has 10 home runs on the season. It's been a huge pickup, the transfer from Texas a &M. Yeah, and she's the leading hitter at 343. And she'll uh, come up with a base runner on board. Wade Caser draws one of those walks you were just talking about. Now you got Dak hitting in the nine spot with the top of the order coming back around. Let's see, is that Amaya Ross, the pinch runner? And Virginia, no, let's see, the Seminoles. Yes, that is Amaya Ross. So she will run for Hallie. Ross can go too. Fourteen of fourteen stealing bases this year. It runs on. So there you go. The next one would be one hunch. Or the best at it in the ACC. One of the other thing that you know, Ronnie talks about too is not just the speed, but the read for the base runners yeah. and read to lead. Like coming into a new ballpark like this. How is the ball going to bounce around off the fence? Can you take an extra base? Can you turn third and head for home if it's in the gaps? You know, what is the spatial relationship to your base running as well, which is, you know, next level stuff. Ross goes, the throw is high, and she's in safe. 
Well, and the other thing that the speed does is Castine, the shortstop, and Fagan, the second baseman, are pinched up the middle because they're trying to protect that speed. Look at where Fagan was. She was way up the middle. Castine as well. So what does that do? That opens up the hitting lanes for the batter. So the 5-6 hole, the 3-4 hole, those lanes are opened way up for your hitter. So now your batting averages go up, your ability to hit with runners in scoring position, depending on what bases they're in. And Lemley shows her toughness. She gets Dak two down. And that's a great comeback against Dak, one of the best hitters on this club who comes in to pinch hit. This is the changeup. This is the pitch. Look at the tight rotation on that. That tight rotation is what fools the eye of the hitter. Again, that's the pitch that I think that Emma Lemley needs to be thrown at least once to every hitter. Fourth strikeout of the night. Second this inning, and here comes Flaherty for the fourth time. 0 for 2 with a walk. Change up again now more often here late in the game. Top of the sixth, third time through the lineup. Oh, two from Lemley. Right back up the middle. Ross is being waved home. And the throw way offline, and another run scores. Flaherty is going to head for third. Heads up, running on the bases, and again the Seminoles right there, ready to pounce on the throwing error. And it's four nothing. Oh, Flaherty is going to get a rise ball that she just barrels up, drives that right back down up the middle. And so that ball put into play as hard as it is. Emma Ritter coming up at this throw so far offline. And again, missing the cut. So no opportunity for Jamie Bailey, the first person, the first baseman who's the person coming over to try to make that cut. She makes the cut. There's a chance they could go after Flaherty trying to get to second. But the throw's offline. It gets past everybody. It's a throwing error from Ritter in the outfield. Before you know it, it runs on the board and Flaherty's at third. And here comes Mudge again. Two hits today for Kaylee. She has now reached in 14 consecutive. She just had a 12-game hit streak snapped Tuesday night in their win over Stetson. Right back in on that horse. Let's go digging in right now. Kaylee Mudd, she was in Washington, D.C. at the end of March. One of the representatives for student athletes in the NIL conversation with the House Energy and Commerce Subcommittee. Pitch count approaching 100. That is uh, an empty Virginia Tech bullpen right now, so it's all Lemley. Here in the top of the sixth, Mudge got good speed, the clutch, and she's safe at first. It was not a clean pick for Castine, and another run scores. Mudge just has a lot of speed getting down the line. Ooh. Looks like, and I think they're going to challenge this. Yeah. She appeared to be out at first glance. There you see the double pump. So the challenge uh, with the call on the field of safe at first, this is big, of course, because it could take a run off the board as the third out of the inning. 
There's that little bobble right there, makes it closer than it needs to be. Good strip by Bailey over at first. Yeah, these last two angles. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna change this. Does the heel touch the base? No. No, I think right there it should shift out. I think that's enough video evidence to overturn it. And there it is, the reversal. And that will leave Flaherty stranded, so that run does not come in. But one other does. And it's a 4-0 Seminoles lead. Heart of the order coming up for Virginia Tech. Michelle, not only with your glove, but with your throws, the cutoffs, crucial, and that hasn't been the case tonight yeah, and this for is Virginia a, Tech. This is an outfield that is typically steady Eddie, one of the best in the business, and they've just had some Defensive bobbles off the gloves, throwing errors way offline, not hitting cuts, and you know, all those little things have to be so precise. Especially when Kat Sandercock is doing what she's doing. She's retired the last eight in a row. And she continues to be masterful against ACC opposition. She's just Worked from ahead, and she's been so efficient. Look at this, we're in the bottom of the six, just 53, 53 pitches. pitches. You know, the other thing too, when you pitch, you match up against a Catherine Sandicock as another pitcher. Sometimes you feel the pressure like you can't make a mistake because you know she's not gonna make a mistake. And sometimes it piles on. Just three earned runs now allowed in her 50 innings of work in the ACC. Got to get through the middle of the order, though. Again, here in the bottom of the six, three, four, five. Excuse me, two, three, four. Cameron Fagan, who has one of those hits back in the third inning. She was actually their last base runner in that third inning. Consecutive. One, two, three innings in the fourth and the fifth has really kind of put out any fire that Virginia Tech has tried to ignite. Off the glove of Sandercock, and that'll find its way out to center field. The leadoff for Fagan as they try and get something started. Yeah, and that's, that's a rare miss for Catherine Sandercock giving up a 0-2 pitch right back up the middle. It's an outer pitch, it comes right back at her. And so that's a rise ball in the outer half that needs to be more up and more out. She gave up a 0-1 pitch when she was ahead in the third, but that's a 0-2 big miss that you typically don't see Sandra Cock made, especially late in the game. Patty Green who reached back in the first with a walk. The uh, only free pass of the night for Cat. That's another one well struck. Back to back hits. And Virginia Tech threatening here in the sixth. This is exactly what Virginia Tech did in the third. They had Brown and Fagan go back to back. This time it's Fagan and Green. Not doing too much with the ball. It's a, it's a good pitch on the inner half. It's a base, okay, it's a single. Cat Sandercock gives you a single pitch. You have to take the single hit. When you start trying to hit the doubles and home runs off of the single pitches, that's when you start rolling over and you're getting yourself out. So this is a good opportunity here for Virginia Tech. They look like they're very comfortable. Third time through the lineup, making those adjustments and, and hoping that this is what's gonna happen. This is a, you know, four, five, and six, so they really can bash the ball. Peck, Ritter, Bailey, Green, all the double-digit home run hitters. In fact, the only club in the country that has four hitters in double digits. Fagan and Green single to get aboard. Here comes Emma Ritter. A couple of ground outs, and twice she's had runners in scoring position, so this is her third chance of the night. They are 0 for 5 on the evening. They all came in the early innings. Risp and 0 for 6. 
One down. And that's where you have to understand the situation and, and hunt a pitch. You can't guess. You can't go up there thinking, all right, I'm going to swing at that first no. pitch because what does Catherine Sandercock do? She throws you a changeup. You're guessing, and you're popping up to the infield. It's just really about reading pitches instinctually then and going after them. Freshman, yeah. McKenna Reed, the lefty from Portland, Oregon. Stick with Cat here, the veteran. Third work for Cat. Doesn't have any strikeouts tonight. She's been letting the defense work behind her. Bailey has also grounded out twice tonight. And a base hit under the glove of Muffley. And they are loaded for Virginia Tech with one out and Bree Peck, who leads the team with 14 home runs including three in her last three games. And this is a first pitch changeup again, but this one, Bailey was waiting for it. She was hunting that pitch. She was not fooled by it and blasts it right back past Muffley. And you can see, look at, she's, she's given her teammate, like, let's relax, just look for a pitch. They hit a grand slam a couple of nights ago against Radford. That was Emma Ritter. And here's Bree Peck with the bases loaded. She is now the tying run at the plate. Three straight uh, singles in the inning, Fagan, Green, and Bailey. Peck has Flown out to left and grounded out to second base. The infield stays at double play depth. Anything hit hard, they're looking to try to turn something. 6 4 3 up the middle. And tremendous respect, too, from the Florida State outfield uh, for the Peck Power. They are almost heels on the dirt out there. Mudge is. You know, the rule is always keep the ball in front of you. Don't let them hit it over your head. Unless it's leaving the park and then you better climb the wall to go get it. <laughs> The one that Tech wants at the plate. She's been tearing it up of late. Quality pitch by Sandra Cock. That rise ball gets Peck to swing through it. Just the first of our double header tonight. Coming up next, Oklahoma State and Texas. That is a top 10 showdown. Out 
out to center field. Janai Kerr is under it. And Fagan will come in to score as the throw comes in towards third base. So the sack fly for Peck gets Tech on the board. Good job on the sack fly for Bree Peck to get it onto the outfield. But then again, just really good decisions by Florida State. Kerr coming into third, not allowing Green or Bailey to advance. Bring up Kelsey Bennett, the senior from Buford, Georgia. First pitch swinging again. And Florida State able to limit the damage. One run in, but a couple others stranded as we head to the seventh the schedule, they have eight top 25 wins and four wins against the RPI top 10, as they appear to be in line right now to host a regional and a super regional. If they can keep winning, they still have a road trip at Notre Dame, as well as Louisville home, a couple of Florida games, non-conference, and then of course the ACC tournament, which will take them back to South Bend. Three, four, five coming up. Nice backhand at second base, Cameron Fagan. Well, with the schedule that Florida State has had, is that even if they did have to go on the road for a Super Regional, they, they're, <laughs> they're tested. They're tested, that's for sure. They gotta be confident. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a good chance that they can sit. That next game, uh, we'll, we'll get you there as soon as we can, but we are told now that uh, they have uh, started out in a weather delay in Austin tonight. Hopefully we'll have the pokes and the horns coming up. In the meantime, seventh inning, Florida State by three, Virginia Tech with one more at bat to come. Harding backs up Fagan, another Good play at second for Cam, two down. Fagan's so strong in that middle position. She had started off at shortstop, had a little bit of a shoulder injury earlier in career, has really settled in at the second base position, knows how to read the ball, and that's what's so important. Those last two shots hit out of her heart. She creates some separation from her body, gloves it up, nice throw over to first. I'll bring up Janai Kerr. In the bottom of the seventh for Virginia Tech, it will be eight, nine, and one do up. Will it be against Katherine Sandercock? Or might we see an appearance from McKenna Reed, who was warming up in the bullpen last inning? Sandercock's pitch count is still ridiculously low. <laughs> <laughs> Just so efficient, you know, and, and you talked about it earlier, Beth, that she does not have a lot of strikeouts in this game, but really she came into today's game with 105 innings pitch to just 67 strikeouts, the complete polar opposite of what we see with Emma Lumley, who had 227 strikeouts coming in tonight. She's over 230 on the on the year, so just different ways, you know, more pitch to contact with Sandercock, more power with Lumley, but that's the pitch she needs to continue to throw, and that changeup is... Just can be so effective. Gets away from her once in a while, but that's okay because it helps set up everything else. And I think that's the art of pitching, right? The art of pitching is figuring out where to throw pitches, how to throw the pitches, and when to throw them. Sharp. The defense a bit shaky behind her. All, all four of the runs in involved some sort of error or th a throw that was offline or a ball that could have been scooped that got under a glove. And Kerr legs it out. She's safe at first. The infield single. Her second of the night. That's a cute shot off at of the end of the bat on a changeup pitch that really did fool Kerr, but just gets enough of it. 
You can see it's a changeup, just rolls it off the end of the bat because she's got that good speed from the left side. She's able to beat it out. Bethany Keene. Three for three tonight. Goes off the rise. Don't forget the, uh, se the second and third games tomorrow night, Saturday afternoon of the series, available on ACC Network Extra. Virginia Tech goes back and watches the film of this game. They're going to realize that a couple of mistakes, you know, Emma Lemley has given up three 0-2 base hits, so tighten up the pitches. Make sure that you're throwing better pitches when you're ahead. Work from ahead, but also, the, you know, the defensive. You make a couple of defensive plays, the complexion of this game completely changes. And I think, too, for Florida State, whether this was Lonnie's intent. Let's throw Sander Cock the first game. Let's see if we can keep the bats quiet, maybe frustrate Virginia Tech's hitters a little bit early in this series, see if we can get them off line a little bit for games two and three. So far, that's the case. The seventh inning still to come. For the team that uh, leads the country in home runs hit. Brown. Last chance coming up for Virginia Tech. They're down to three spot. Morgan has been outstanding this year. And Coach Lonnie Alameda says, I've tried to protect her. I wanted to make sure I used her in the right spots. And uh, she got her first start in uh, game one of the series against Clemson at Clemson. Um, but it's done a really good job, Beth, of coming in late in games. Throws with really good velocity in the upper 60s. Nice rise ball. Yeah, this is her 27th appearance and just that one start against Clemson where she picked up a win. So, Sander Cox, six innings of work, the one earned run, that's it. And now Reed to face eight, nine, and one. Here is Rachel Castine, robbed of a home run back in the first inning by Kaylee Mudge, and then grounded to short in the fifth. The one run for Tech came in the last inning. They put together three singles to load the bases, got a sacrifice fly. But the clutch hit has been elusive tonight. One for eight, Risp, and 0 for six with two outs against Sandercock. Yeah, they are seeking their first walk-off of the season here, Smitty. Can they get it done? Get some runners on base. That'll be the first one. So far, being patient against McKenna Reed, and that's really what you have to do. Great job so far by Castine, really making McKenna Reed, the freshman, come into the zone. Only 11 walks on the year to those 65 strikeouts and 47 innings pitched. Fastball in there. So Castine hits here in the eighth spot. They got a pinch hitter coming up in the nine spot. Then back around to the top of the order. Full count. Thank you. 
Here's the 3-2 pitch. Got her. Big bounce back for Reed after it was 3-0. One down. Kenna Reed, the freshman, falls behind 3-0 with three rise balls, and she's going to come back on this outer half. That's got a little up and a little back in, almost like a backdoor curve ball with a little slide going up, a little slide coming back into the zone. She gets Castine to swing through it, so the freshman, really good lively arm, comes back for the strikeout. Here's Chavez, who's 11 for 30 on the season. She is the pinch hitter here. So how about that? Six innings of work for Sandercock without a strikeout, and then Reed whiffs the first one she sees. That's what we call good complementary pitching. Absolutely. Round balls to strikeouts. Reed just has that great spin, so the ball looks a little elusive, and it's hard to tell at times if it's going to be hanging and staying on the outer half, especially coming from that left side to a right-hander's perspective, or if it's actually going to keep going up. That's why it's so important to really learn to read spin on the ball. So if it's more bullet spin or more 12 o'clock spin, 6 o'clock spin going up. You know, Reed's really done a great job of increasing her velocity this spring. She came in, she was more so in the low 60s, but has really hit the weight room, dialed it up. There's a big difference. If you can throw that ball 67, 68, 69 miles an hour and have that late, sharp movement, hide the ball behind your back, you're tough to hit. Oh, I've had good run of really good pitchers under Lana Alameda, who does a terrific job. You know, working, blending that mix of veterans and newcomers. And she spends a lot of time with her pitchers, not only in practice, but in game. They'll huddle up between innings all the time. That's gonna... <laughs> it's a little noisy. <laughs> What the Seminoles have coming up. Still a couple more with Virginia Tech. They'll, they'll go out of uh, conference to play Florida a couple of times. A road trip to Notre Dame and then Louisville to close out the regular season that weekend of May 5, 6, 7. And then it's back to Notre Dame for the ACC tournament. Outside the bank at third. Try to take a little off that pitch, which I like that. It's a good thought. I think just a little different location for McKenna Reed. Those are these learning experiences for her. I think, you know, when you're ahead one and two, throw that pitch, but throw it a little bit lower and a little bit slower. Chavez getting her money's worth here this at bat. Digging in the back of that batter's box. Eight pitch of the AB. I thought they might go back to that changeup again and try to work it a little lower, a little slower. <laughs> Throw it in at 41 feet. You'd be surprised how many people swing at that. Gets her to pop it up at the field. Will run out of room. Is that bounced off the fence? He's trying to push it back to buy a little more space. <laughs> 
10th pitch of this at bat. Reed and Chavez. chance here with one out the bottom of the seventh I believe this will be their second 12 pitch at bat of the evening that one deep still has a pitch to play with <laughs> Took a deep breath. I think she's tired. <laughs> There's a lot of foul balls. You know, a lot of times when you're hitting, you're taking BP. You, you know, you might take three swings, five swings, and then you rotate. Thirteenth pitch coming. That's right. You keep moving around in that <laughs> Seminole dugout, trying to find the right mojo. Chavez. Uh, this one will stay in play. Two down. And the Hokies are down to their final out. Top of the order, Kelsey Brown. One for three, has reached twice. And here comes the big outfield shift again. Everybody to the left, to the left. On the inside, to the right, to the right. Now they, from their point of view. <laughs> <laughs> Much hugging that line. Brown drags it, and she's aboard. Second hit for Kelsey tonight. Yeah, there's nothing you can do on that. The only way that you can play that is if Keen, the first baseman, is going to come up and Flaherty is able to go to second. But not the way that they're playing and they've got Keen going back. There's no opportunity for Flaherty. That's just called speed and great bunning. All right, so here comes Fagan and Green. They both singled their last times up. That was against the starter, Kat Sandercock. the fences 0 and 1. Yeah, this is the lefty lefty matchup that really Lonnie Alameda wanted. Fagan. That could be trouble and that'll drop. Base hit. Brown motors around to third. And with two outs here in the bottom of the seventh, Virginia Tech will get the tying run to the plate. Fagan, after being fooled on a rise ball, gets another one. But this one's a little bit lower, and she just gets jammed up, but finishes her swing enough to get it out onto the green. Looked like Flaherty may have been a little bit closer to Keen on that. All drops, Tech's in business. So now starts the stretch of the four in a row with double digit home runs. Here's Addie Green, has reached twice, singled and walked. been perfect for Virginia Tech, but if you're Pete DeMore, you, this is what you want. You're giving yourself the opportunity to try to walk it off here, or at least tie it up. Oh, 
The one and one. It's been a rough go with runners in scoring position. down to their final strike. Two pitch. Hey. 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 Put the infield together. Well, they've been, Lonnie Alameda has been prepping and grooming McKenna Reed. To be an arm they can count on out of the bullpen all year long. Getting her ready for moments like these. With the pressure on late in games, trying to finish off Virginia Tech in game one of the series. But the Hokies are one swing away from knotting this up. Two and two. Watching, reading that spin. Full count. Two pitch, and the bases are loaded. And now the game winner comes to the plate. Florida State has not lost all season with a lead into the seventh inning. And it's the veteran Emma Ritter who hit a grand slam Tuesday night in the win over Radford. First pitch swinging. And it's caught in right field. Autumn Belvi ends the ball game. Florida State hangs on for the win as the Hokies leave the bases loaded in the bottom of the seventh. Four to one, the final. Reed gets the save for Catherine Sandercock, who picks up the win. It is the 16th in the last 18 games.